have in our dressing room 14 men and six women that have trained and worked. They've bled, they sweat, and they've cried for you folks. So I got a question. Pittsburgh, are you ready to get this party started? It's fight time! Let's bring out first, fighting out of the red corner, Sarah Click. Coming out first, we've got Sarah Click, uh, fighter taking on Melissa Gastic in the, uh, the first initial bout of our night. Sarah Click coming, as we said before, all the way from Massachusetts uh, with an unbeaten record of one win, zero losses. Yes, both these girls uh, actually are in the Army. Um, Melissa Gastic, full-time Army National Guard. Um, I've seen Sarah Click's photo. Uh, she is also in the Army, and uh, I think this fight is going to be pretty good for girls with uh, this level of amateur record. Um, Absolutely. Both fighters unbeaten with a total f amount of fights between the two of them at three. Uh, Gastic with two and oh, and Sarah Click, a, an unbeaten record of one and one and oh. I have to wonder if it's going to mess with their head a little bit, the fact that they both are in the Army. I remember once having a fight with a, a gentleman named Buzz Alderman in Portland, and uh, as I walked out to the cage, I saw a big Eagle Globe and Anchor tattoo on his arm. Myself being a former Marine, it, it, I won't lie, it kind of played with me a little bit. I think there's definitely going to be a rivalry here. Um, you know, who, who's the tougher army chick? Uh, you know, that's got to be on both their minds. Bragging rights are a big deal. Absolutely. Sarah Click coming with the Sitya Dong Muay Thai team out of Boston, Massachusetts. Very excited to see what kind of a game she's going to have. I'd have to assume that she's coming to throw some heavy punches and kicks. I would think that this matchup should come down to a classic striker versus grappler match. Sarah Click from a Muay Thai camp, she's going to want to hit. Uh, Melissa Gastic fighting out of the mat factory. It's a wrestling-oriented camp. Uh, she's going to want to take this to the ground. Absolutely. Sit Yat Tong of Boston, Massachusetts uh, is a camp that's under the tutelage of Mark Della Grate, a famous Muay Thai fighter. I, I can't wait to see what's going to happen with uh, Melissa Gastic going for her wrestling techniques, and uh, I want to see what kind of a, a game Sarah Click's able to put together. I really love this matchup. Yeah, Sarah Click moving around the ring, um, you know, looks relatively big at 125 here. Here we have a local Pittsburgh favorite. Uh, I know that Sarah Click's not going to receive the same amount of fan support as Melissa Gastic, with Melissa Gastic being a local Pittsburgh fighter coming out of the, the Matt Factory, which is a, uh, a local premier gym in the Pittsburgh area. Yeah, Matt Factory, um, also uh, Dominic Mazzotta, um, who would have fought tonight if his opponent had made weight. Um, Absolutely. Francis Healy, another Matt Factory uh, a produ production, as well as Chris Dempsey, a new UFC fighter that came right out of our very own league. Yeah, and you can also see in her corner um, Jeremy Koscik, who is uh, with Brute Squad. Um, Absolutely. So uh, she trains at a couple different camps, but Matt Factory is her main training location. Here we see Chris, we see Chris Dempsey walking around. It's good to see him in the corner. A new UFC fighter made his debut not long ago, uh, carrying the 205 power. I'm sorry, 185 pound uh, Gladiators of the Cage professional belt as we speak. I like to call him the face of stone. Uh, he, he looks like he can take a shot, and he can. Um, he's known for that uh, <laughs> at a local level, certainly. Melissa Gastic sporting an unbeaten two wins and zero losses, five foot three inches tall. Her last fight was a win versus Ricky Schutza via first round submission. Now, I was there to see that fight, and I know for a fact Melissa Gastic outclassed Schutza in every way possible. Yeah, um, Melissa, I would say the thing about her that's most prominent is she is extremely strong for a girl of her size. Um, Actually, Mike, let's go ahead and take a look at the tail of the tape. We've got Melissa Gastic, 26 years of age, weighing in at 125 pounds, with an unbeaten record of two wins, zero losses. She's taking on Sarah Click, who is a, an older 30 years old, 125 pounds, with one win and zero losses. Both fighters stand at five feet, three inches tall. Switch! And fighting out of the blue corner, she weighed it at 123.7 pounds. She stands five feet, three inches tall, with a perfect 2-0 record. She fights out of the mat factory, and she is from Glassport, Pennsylvania, Melissa Gastic! Oh, 
also fighting from the Brute Squad. Round one is brought to you by Blue Water Incorporated Energy Services and the Rehab Center with locations in Clarion, Lower Burrow, North Apollo, Catanning. Chiropractors caring for health. Here we go. Both fighters approach center cage and touch gloves, and Gastic appears to be controlling the pressure right off the jump. Yeah, I think Gastic wants to get this to the ground. She wants to clinch as fast as possible. Absolutely, but I think the clinch game might be a strong suit for Click. Beautiful knee by Click off the clinch. Click, Click being aggressive with her hands and her feet. Looking uh -huh. very comfortable in the tie-up. Gastic trying to use her strength, getting the body lock. Oh, she has a guillotine locked. Got the arm in guillotine. Let's see if she can make the transition or if she's just going to feed some knees. Possibly trying to pull her down, trying to pull Click to the ground. Click will not go. Click doing a great job of trying to control the hips of Gastic with her left hand and Mel a big left hook. Melissa looks like she's putting her strength to use here. She is pressuring her, pushing her up against the cage, hitting her with knees. Absolutely, and Melissa Gastic has never had any sort of questionable cardio skills. Uh, I don't know that she's ever had to really prove her cardio with the way that she's won her last fights, but I'd like to see what kind of a pace she can set through a whole three round. No, and I think at the amateur level where you're fighting two minute rounds here, uh, an athlete in her condition is not gonna have any cardio issues. I really think that Click should go for a whizzer with that right arm right now. She might possibly get her back taken or be shrugged. She's trying to push her face off in a kind of classic Muay Thai style. Oh, arm bar Gassett's attempt. going for the arm bar. I don't know if she has it. Click circling in she a is, really nice way. She is close. Oh, she is on that arm. It, wow. is, it is there. Feet are crossed. Cinching up the thighs is Gastic. Really tight positioning here by Click. I don't know if she's I'm letting it happen. I'm looking at the arm. Um, I think she might have lost it here. Click needs to scramble in the... We have 10 seconds left in the round. Let's see what's going to happen, folks. I don't think she's going to get the arm here. It looks like it is bent at the wrong angle. And that is the round. I would not know how to score that if I had to try. I know that it was fairly even in that clinch game. I have to think that the submission attempt by Gastic may have tipped the scales in her favor. I would give the round to Gastic for the submission attempt at the end. It was close. I think also Gastic held a click against the cage, pushed the action, muscled her a little more though it looks like there might be some damage under the right eye of Melissa. Absolutely, the round card being held by the beautiful Brittany, signifying the beginning of the second round. Both fighters are having their coaches give them their talks, working on the game plan. I think if I'm Click uh, and I am her corner, I am telling her to try to keep Melissa on the outside, pepper her with the jab, do not clinch, do not go to the ground. Absolutely. We saw short glimpses in that first round of Click having some very, uh, very impressive footwork. I, I'd like to see that utilized a bit more. Chip Snyder about to signal the start of round two here. And round two is underway. Sarah Click versus Melissa Gastic. Gastic showing a bit of a mouse under that right eye after the first round. I think those punches Glick was throwing really might have counted. Yeah, I think she she hits hard. I mean, for a 125 girl, she hits hard. And she's doing a great job of using that lead leg kick on Gastic, who is a southpaw, trying to get in close. That's a great way to control the distance. Both girls here trying to control the center. Uh, very important in cage fighting. Definitely jockeying for, for angles. Good kick, though. I love that kick from Click right now. She's keeping Gastic away, and I think that's exactly her route to victory. Click is trying to find her range here. Oh, huge spinning back fist. That was beautiful. Beautifully timed. Just let Gastic get a little bit too close, and we're back into the clinch game that we saw all through the first round. It didn't connect square. It glanced off of the top of her head. If she had connected square, she might have dropped her with that. Absolutely. Gastic going to trying to drag Click to the ground and impl implement her game. Gastic switching to a guillotine. Gastic really pushing Click around, showing a little bit of a physical dominance, I think, in the strength got area the right now. Got the double underhook clinch. She is trying to take her down. Click's got a nice whizzer. Gastic needs to get that right leg trip, and she's, oh. she can get her. 
very close to the trip there, but Click shows really good balance. Now she's fighting for the underhook, and she's got the whizzer. She does not want to go to the ground here. Absolutely, and I, I feel like Click's doing a very good job, you know, stuffing the takedown and thwarting Gastic's attempts, and I have to attribute that to her clinch technique training, I'm sure, at the Sit Ya Tong team. Nice punches there by Click. Absolutely, really nailing Gastic on the right side of her face. In, you know, adding on to that swelling and, and the confusion that that can cause in a fight, especially early in the fight. Only about five seconds left in the second round. And it is in the books. How and would you score that one, Mike? I would give that round to Click. I think Click um, did more damage. I don't think Gastic was able to push her game. She didn't get the takedown. Click was able to avoid it while uh, landing some shots. Absolutely. It's important to remember that Although the shots may not look that hard that Click's throwing, she is really nailing Gastic on her lead leg, and I saw more than a couple left hooks land really flush on Gastic's right eye. I right now have this scored as one round even. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, this is what's going to determine this fight. Absolutely. It's going to come down to heart. I have to think that Gastic looks a little bit more gassed, a little more uh, disheveled coming into this third round than Click, but uh, looks can always be deceiving, and Gastic has a really big heart. I think she does. Um, she's going to have to come out here and get the takedown. I think if Gastic can put her on her back, she owns this round. Absolutely. Stand up, I am not so sure. So the commentators have it scored one to one. Let's see if this third round can determine a winner. Maybe we can get a finish. Gastic popping around, showing that she's still, she's still alive. She's still in the fight. Taking center cage right off again. Big right hand thrown Big by Click. Right. Love that left hook by Click. Click's trying to find her range here. Gastic's corners are yelling for her to throw the two down the pipe, signifying a straight left hand punch. Oh, oh, big shots, big by, shots Click. by Click. She's got Gastic rocked. She needs to capitalize right now. This is the third round. Click looking very, very comfortable right now. Click Good is, footwork. Click has found her range. She's circling. She's light on her feet. She's moving. I, I always love to think what would it be like if these were five-minute rounds instead of the uh, amateur oh, rounds. That is an illegal kick to the head. Big illegal kick. Now, that's another thing I was just saying. If this were to be a professional bout, that kick would have been 100% legal and could have been capitalized upon. However, this is an amateur fight at the second tier in Pennsylvania. There that is not no allowed. There are no kicks to the head. Now, I do not think that Click did that uh, intentionally or out of uh, spite. She trains, kicks to the head. Every fighter does from the beginning of their career. And sometimes you just get carried away and your feet fly. Absolutely. Now, I, I know that this isn't something that was legal and it wasn't intentional. But if I were Click, I would use that kick. I would say Gastic stunned. And as soon as they let it back out, she needs oh. to go after it. Chip Snyder, ref, taking a point away. Um, I would have to agree with his decision. Um, though it's not intentional, I mean, a kick to the head is a, is a game changer. Absolutely. Both fighters five foot three. I have to think that it wouldn't be too difficult to get your leg up that high. However, it is going to affect Gastic's performance in this last minute. Yeah, it's always unfortunate to see a technique like this that you know wasn't intentional, but it's going to affect the outcome of a fight, and there's nothing you can do but take the point away. Absolutely. Now, like I said, if this were a pro fight, I would have, I would have given kudos to that kick all day. A very beautiful technique. Yeah, I mean, it's just unfortunately not a uh, pro fight, and there's there's nothing you can do about it. Um, it's really frustrating. I, I'm sure it's it's frustrating for Click as well as Gastic. Absolutely, um, Click looks ready to go. You know, this is a, this is a time right now. Whenever this kind of a thing happens, she gets a point taken away. You could let that get into your head, and whenever you get back out there, perhaps you would feel a bit tentative. I don't see that happening with Click right now. I hope that the fight gets started back up, and I hope we can see some fireworks in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, if I were Click here or I were Click's corner, I would be telling her to rush out here and throw bombs. Absolutely. Um, I think you know. You had the point taken away for the illegal kick, but you might have hurt Gastic a little. You were doing really well up to this point. Take advantage of that. 
question. Absolutely. I, you know, I would like to take this opportunity to say that one of our sponsors for tonight's fights is Click Vodka. Coincidentally, the same name as Sarah Click. A lot of determining being happening right now. Happening right now. Uh, the referee Chip Snyder is speaking to, I believe, the ringside physician. Let's take a look at an instant replay. Here we see Click moving around, very light on the feet. Big kick and a straight two right off of it. I mean, that was a really nice combination. Wow. It's just unfortunate it's not legal at the amateur level. Absolutely. That kick appeared to land with what you call the bladed foot, uh, with the toes curled up and the ball of the foot striking. Yeah, if she had landed it a couple of inches higher up on the shin, um, Gast, it could be lying on her back right now. Absolutely, and that would not have been a good thing for Click. No. Four, 44 seconds left in this fight. That would have probably resulted in a full disqualification. Absolutely. Now, it's important to note that different states have different policies as far as their athletic commissions. Let's say that we were in uh, California or Oregon or somewhere in another state with different rules. This is actually legal. I know in my first fight as an amateur, we were allowed to have knees and kicks to the head. A lot of jawboning going on right here, Mike. Yeah, I think they uh, are deciding whether the fight actually would be stopped at this point. Uh, I'm not entirely certain what's going on. Um, I don't think Melissa Gastic has taken it. Well, Click is taking off her gloves here, so I assume the fight is over. And I'm also going to assume that possibly the, the, the fight's going to be going to the judges at this late into the third round. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the policies and procedures are in Pennsylvania amateur rules, but I think that this is going to go to the judges' scorecards. I don't see how anyone could have thought at this point that Melissa was injured enough that the fight should have stopped. Um, I mean, you know, she doesn't look particularly injured, uh, but I guess the doctor made that recommendation and um, well, I mean, it, it depends on how you look at it, Mike. I have to think that if Gastic's future would possibly hold a professional career, she could use this as, uh, as an opportunity to show that she can take the real shots. Yeah. But I don't know if it's her decision, and I think that uh, it, it's a very tough call on everyone's part. I don't think this is Gastic's decision. Uh, I'm pretty sure she would have fought. Here we see the replay again. Gastic and Click doing a really good tango here. And here is the illegal head kick coming up. Notice the nice straight two right off the kick. Wow, that was beautiful. It was a really well, uh, well thought out technique there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at one minute and 10 seconds in the third round, Sarah Click has been disqualified. So your winner by disqualification out of the blue corner, Melissa Gastic. <laughs> Katie, get a word with our winner, please. Hi, Melissa. Are you okay? You doing all right? I just think it's like a, I don't know, I don't. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your game plan coming into the fight tonight? I mean, my game plan was to get it against the cage, try to get her on the ground, and um, I'm not really more of a stand-up, I'm more of a ground girl, and uh, that was my plan coming in. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone you'd like to thank tonight? Yeah, I'd like to thank my gyms, uh, Map Factory, Brute Squad Fight Team, um, Olympus Fitness, they have some of the best boxing coaches out there. Um, my sponsors, the Rehab Center, Team Red, White, and Blue. And uh, also, I was made aware that in the audience today, there's a, a wounded vet, <coughs> specialist uh, Helfridge, I believe his name. I don't know where he's sitting, but there's a booth out there raising money for him. Um, he was wounded and uh, deployed in 2006 by an improvised explosive device. So if you see, uh, go see that booth and donate some money. Also to my opponent, thanks for traveling here um, to take the fight. I mean, I don't, know, I don't know what else to say about that. It's a crappy way to win. You don't want to win like that. But uh, if you see her, shake her hand, thank her for her service too. Um, she's a vet, deployed to Afghanistan, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay, thank you so much. Congratulations. Let's hear it for her. 
Give it up for Melissa Gastic, your winner by disqualification. I gotta tell you, Mike, I'd be lying if I had said that this fight did not leave me wanting more. I would love to have seen this continue, and it's only too bad that it ended the way it did. I think uh, Melissa Gastic is extremely disappointed. Um, she didn't want to win this way. No, nobody wants to win this way. This is not a good way to go out. However, Melissa Gastic moving on now to an unbeaten three wins, zero losses, and Sarah Click moving on to a one win, one loss via disqualification. You know, at the end of the day, a win is a win, and uh, that's what a fighter takes away from it. It's all experience at the amateur level. Absolutely, and I think that both fighters showed a lot of heart. Very good competition, and I really hope that we can see Sarah Click come on back to Gladiators of the Cage sometime soon, because I was very impressed with what she was doing. I thought she was excellent. At this point, we'd like to take a moment to broadcast some messages from our sponsors.